Okay, so question Who is the holder of truth? Where do you go to to find truth? Pertaining to humanity, human origin, why we're here, what we're doing here, spirituality, esoteric, cosmic knowledge, even just knowledge about um, the cosmos, the solar system. Who's the holder of truth? You know, we found flaws in what we've been taught in our youth and not even flaws, just downright lies, basically, about, you know, things that we thought were set in stone that you, as you get older, you get start to realise that actually these are all theories and no one actually really knows the truth. They're just like theories, speculations and assumptions and hypotheses but where do you go to for truth is my question like who where's the source of truth uh, does it depend on what culture you're from is it a cultural thing so different cultures have different cultural truths but then things that pertain to all of humankind like the cosmos or solar system for example that affects everybody <laughs> and um it's not just a particular cultural thing so who where is the holder of the truth about the solar system for instance so we see um nasa seem to be the leading voice behind um the solar system and what's up there and but who made them the authority so they say that everything revolves around the sun. The sun's in the middle and all the planets go around the sun. How do we know that's true? Like who's been up there to witness this, to say, yeah, the sun's in the middle and all the other planets go around it? I mean, NASA, and the whole space program of America claim that they have landed on the moon and all this stuff and they show all these pictures of um, satellites in orbit and all these things but from what I've um, seen from various researchers that pose these types of questions main source being really um, Bro Sanchez among others, I mean, Martin Kenny. Um, it's like, um, all of the graphics and images that NASA gives us are CGI, computer generated images. I think that's what it stands for. <laughs> um, you hear all these terminologies. So they're not real, actual images of the actual planet Earth, as they would like you to believe. So the round globe that you see that represents Earth, no one's actually been out and taken that picture. It's just um, an image that was gen generated on a computer. So you put in the information of what you think Earth looks like, and then the computer generates this image. That is what? that round blue ball with the green patches and stuff is it's not real that astronauts took a picture of that while they was up in space on their way to the moon no there is no such image that exists these are all computer generated so how do we know that the earth looks like a round blue ball i mean when you start to realize things like this and you realize that there is not one real authoritative figure or one real source of truth. So who decides? That like take religion, for example. They, that's, that was our go-to, you know, in times past. Right up until, I would say, 
my generation, which I'm in my 40s, so when we were kids coming up, we had that elder thing, you know, the elders knew best, the elders were the wise ones, or, you know, you go to your grandparents, or, you know, the church elder, or, you know, pastor. And we just left it up to them to be the ones to tell us what's real, what's not, what's, you know, what spiritual things stand for. But now we're starting to realize that these people don't even really know. There is no um, authority. There is no truth source, one source of truth for everyone. What seems to be is that each culture makes, has their own, not mix up, I shouldn't say that. Each culture has their own definition of what they think, how they think creation started or, so you've got the, the cultures that adopt Christianity, they believe in the Bible account. You know, Genesis, God said all this stuff and stuff happened. But you've got, um, you know, like, um, like the Chinese, their creation story is um, a bit different. Um, you've got um, all these ancient sort of traditions and their stories, their accounts of creation is kind of different as well like not even just accounts of creation but also where we are located like what where are we are we on a ball or are we on a flat plane you know or is it just like the spirit like we know we know you're here we know there's a earth because we're in it but it's not really Because there's physicality because we walk on the ground we know that's physicality but that is still just an accumulation of earth if you know what i mean like if you break down each pot you know each piece of land to a single grain of sand you know like every land mass is like an accumulation so does that really make it a physical plane because all the earth accumulated in one area and settled i don't know what i'm trying to say but my question really is where is where do you find truth authentic unadulterated undisturbed truth where does that exist in our existence and um in answer to my own question, in my own experience, I mean, everyone's experiences is different. In my own experience, um, I have no answer for that. In terms of um, the bigger questions like, you know, humanity, why is there four root races, you know, black, white, Asian, and the Indian Asian? Why is there four root races? Everything, everyone is a is within these four root races. You can get mixtures and things like that, but still there's four root races. Why Why is that? You know, and then you've got questions of which root race came first and all of this. Even though I don't think that's very, that's really important, really. It's really like, what? Like who's, who has the truth? Who has the real truth from, you know, earliest time possible. And a lot of people really believe that Christians do. Whereas, you know, if you really research Christianity, it's such a plagiarized discipline. Or is it? I think on the surface, it looks plagiarized. It looks like, hey, hold on a minute, you've stolen this story from ancients. I mean, you can compare the story of Jesus or the, just the whole Christian concept with um, Egyptian, Egyptian mythology and see very, very big similarities. You, there's a virgin birth, there's a Christ-like, you know, character. So is it plagiarism or are they saying the same thing? when I think of the concept of spirituality I can see how 
you know different people can arrive at the same conclusion because if it's just one spirit one god one influence then of course you're all going to get you know different cultures are going to get the same story maybe told in a different way but you're going to get the story because that's the only story there is if that's the you know the one god but who has the truth who has the whole truth like undiluted not made up not fabricated not you know oh let's tell the masses this because it's going to make them behave a certain way or don't tell the masses this because oh my god if they know this they're going to uproar you know who has that authenticity anymore that no one has faith in world leaders anymore no one has you know puts their trust really in governments anymore a lot of the time we go by what you know leaders and governments and people in power say out of you know you have to we ain't got no choice if you don't do what you're you know here in the uk if you don't abide by the laws you be punished so it's not that yeah i like my leader my prime minister or my royal family or whatever it's been forced upon me i didn't choose you so it's not like oh you know united kingdom is you know civilized and they have a you know um law system and all of it so most of it is under duress do this or else basically believe this or else learn this or else you know so it's not really a freedom of choice thing it's not really oh yeah we have you know this strong morals and ethos and we follow instruct no 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 it's a consequence if you don't follow it so that kind of negates it it doesn't make it a free will choice thing it's like you know lord and master basically so you can't you know we don't get the truth from world leaders so to speak so where do you get it from i mean my parents are of african descent nigeria to be exact of the Igbo tribe in you know west or was it the east oh my god let me not misquote and sound silly here now but nigeria and you know our truths and our um you know knowledge and teachings about that come from the elders comes from the land kind of thing like the people of the land pass on by word of mouth initially you know the what they call omenala which means way of the land basically so whatever part you're from you know this is the way that our ancestors have behaved and this is what they do and this is what they believed in so we do it kind of thing you know but I mean that I think is you know holds some ground because you know this is the way it's always been done since early times so it's more likely to be kept in how it started but then again there can be deviations how do you know someone didn't come along and change it up and then now we're following a changed up version you know because not knowing how long we've been on this in this existence or humankind has been in existence kind of makes it hard to pinpoint as well but why would there be an earth without humans on it you know like when they say um the dinosaurs were here first or earth what is it got hit by some planet or whatever cracked and then it was burning for ages and then it cooled down and then life started and then you know eventually we got here that doesn't even make sense but anyway in a way it kind of does if you think of it as um you know if you look at the kingdoms of life okay so before humankind i guess which is the most how can i put it complex Ooh excuse me the most complex of the um kingdoms so if you think you start simpler so you start with the mineral kingdom with rocks and stones and earth basically or the elements then you get um from mineral 
kingdom you'd go to i think plant kingdom plant life and vegetation and then from there you get the animal kingdom and then human kingdom so i guess initially before the human kingdom came the wild mineral kingdom was having you know their time there could have been a time without human but if there was no humans then to me there was no um dinosaurs unless they thought okay maybe as part of the animal kingdom before human came up i don't know that the animal kingdom the vegetation you know king if they were separate like that because what is the point of vegetation and plant life if there's no one to see it use it what is its purpose was no one to utilize it to till the land or you know maybe it was just a big bush of life I guess just life I wonder if that's why the burning bush in the Bible where mm. anyway I digress so yeah and why would there be animals if there was no humans I don't know but like even with the evolution theories it's like yeah it starts with you know water then you get cell life and then you get you know everything evolves 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 until you finally get a human i guess that is a possibility but not the way that they say it so if you look at it as okay everything is one like the spirit so even that mineral kingdom stage where there was just rocks and stone I guess and the plant um, kingdom and animal kingdom if you think of it as it's still us in terms of um, spirits having experiences just that we're experiencing in a different shell in a different avatar I suppose that's a possibility that we first came as minerals then as we evolved we moved on to plant life and then as we evolved animal and then evolved further still humans is there a next stage after us who knows see there's no this is where why i say life is happening in real time like it's happening as we speak because certain things no one knows and the reason why no one knows is because it's happening as it's happening <laughs> if that makes sense like it's like um that life is unfolding right before our eyes like it's not pre how can i explain it we know that there's past there's concepts of past and concepts of future but they don't exist only the present exists So, we operate from this place of presence. Everything else is an illusion. So if you, you know, if you're trying to find out information as to, you know, previous ages, it's like, they don't really exist. They're illusionary. Like, they exist in our memory, but they're not here anymore past events future ones haven't even come yet so they still don't exist so all you really have is this time now the present now and from there how do we deduce what is and what is not especially when you have um this is why information is just information is like spirit itself as well because that's what ties you kind of to previous events or you know or even makes you question because without information we wouldn't even know that there was a previous time before this time we would think that this was that we were the first people here and then when you look at the internet as well like worldwide web of information i mean i know people think that oh the internet is the devil's tool 
or it's um something evil about it but really and truly you can really sit down and look at the beauty of it because how i see it why i think the internet is beautiful and i think it's a spiritual thing i don't think any person decided to create the internet it's just always been there always been there we've just tapped into it now but um yeah why i think the internet is beautiful is because it has um it's given us uh, the opportunity to how do you say it um experience without having to change location so it's like you know we have access to things that we've never had at our fingertips before without having to actually leave our location to go and experience that so we've got things like video messaging video calling you know where you can speak to your family members in another country without even having to think about the plane ticket to go you can be part of a family function without being there <laughs> which is kind of like you know the spirit or like when you dream you can travel to other places without your body having to leave and go there so the internet to me is like very astral very astral um concept in that it's here but it's not it's here with us but it's not because it's in the web in the clouds so to speak and what is the web what is that net you know we call where we are a plan net a planned net or planet so these ideas of nets and webs interesting but i personally believe that's what the stars are the stars are different points of the net if you think of like a fishing net you know it goes it does that crisscross thing lines going one way lines going another. i think the stars is what the, that's what the stars are doing in my personal opinion i think they're energy centers of information and if you can harness that information or know how to tap into that then you've got insight so to speak into world events or you know any the energetic movements of where we are because everything really is energy everything is energy this is the conscious talk now everything is energy flowing at different frequencies <laughs> and a lot of people think the spirit is energy but i don't think the spirit is energy because energy is a it's like a secondary thing it's caused by something so if you say you know spirit or god is energy then no energy is created they say energy is not created or destroyed energy is created you can create energy you know and it isn't anyway let me get not get too technical because i can't verify all the things i'm saying i don't want to be sounding on but yeah my question who is the holder of truth